It's hard to believe it's been nearly a year since we left Charleston. In my mind's eye, I often return to Sandy Ridge. I can see clearly the live oaks blowing in the wind as they stand so proudly against the backdrop of the white pillared mansion. I can smell the sweet honeysuckle blooming and the welcoming aroma of fresh baked bread. My ears echo with the sounds of laughter and that soulful singing of the slaves working in the fields. I can just run my tongue over my lips, remembering the taste of the salty air. What would I not give to spend one more hour with my sister Annabelle, or just to lay my head in Mammy's lap and let her rock away my sorrows? I often think of the fussy gremlins and the tight-fitting corsets that I used to scorn. I would welcome them all back if only I could dance across those grand halls again. Sandy Ridge is only a memory. The slaves have all fled the frontier of their freedom. The burned-out hole of the big house will soon tumble down. My sister Annabelle trapped in a passion of youth and I suppose the urgency of uncertain times found herself to be an unwed mother. So assured the child she cared was a boy, she proudly chose the name Thomas Jacob. Thomas for a beloved and Jacob for a dear papa. Annabelle's intuition and her tender body failed her. She exchanged her soul for a beautiful girl, baby girl on a stormy night. Three years have passed and this happy little girl we call TJ is a spitting image of her mother. So much so that Papa often slips and calls her Annabelle, reminding us this starting little girl will never know her own mother. Now we can only pray fate will be kind and her father will return safely home from the Great War. Oh yes, North Carolina is my home now, and I am thankful to be safe, but Charleston will always be in my heart. The old memories bring tears to mother's eyes, and therefore we seldom speak of them. There are some memories that will forever lay heavy upon my bosom. Folks know my husband Edmund was killed, and I suppose out of respect, they don't ask me too many questions. But once I tried to tell Papa what happened. Lizzie, what is done is done, he said. It is God's job to pass judgment, not mine. Papa was right. No amount of talk could change things. I found my peace in believing that Edmund's death was his own fault. Even the innocence of a young girl like Cindy Lou, even if she was a colored girl, was worth protecting. My whole life seems like a bittersweet dream, but here at my sister Sally's house, everything is real. Papa's fortune is lost. Annabelle is dead, and Sally's husband, like most of the men, is off fighting in the Confederate Army. I ask myself, will our prayers save a chosen few? Or will mothers and lovers be left to cry in poetry and song? From chapter one of Beyond Sandy Ridge. <laughs>